The next main section we're going to look at is feedback and stability. So hopefully by now you're pretty well aware that with any type of device we're going to have some tolerance and we're going to also have some maybe material differences. So let's say we have tolerances in our processing and our materials. And so ultimately what this leads to is variation in our circuit operation. And so we can think of how our current gain, variations in our current gain, what we called beta for our IC biasing um, in our previous section, caused the circuit to behave differently. So ideally we don't want to have our circuit changing just because a, a tr particular transistor was manufactured with a slightly different beta, for instance. So what we can do is we can implement feedback. And so feedback, which we've seen a little bit in some other classes, is essentially just taking a portion of the output and comparing it to the input. So here we're taking a portion of our output and we are connecting and we'll see in a bit we're basically just either adding or subtracting to our input. And so what we're going to see is by utilizing this feedback, we can make it such that our circuit is essentially independent of individual parameters, individual um, component parameters, I should say. So independent of individual, and particularly we're going to be focusing on transistor circuits. So I'm going to say individual transistor parameters. Okay, so a couple notes on feedback before we talk about some general advantages and disadvantages. So the feedback amplifier was actually invented by somebody called Harold Black. And so that was way back in the 1920s. So he invented our feedback amplifier. in 1928. And so originally what this was used for was in telephone repeaters, um, essentially just to help the stability of those signals as they were sent along telephone lines, but now virtually all amplifier systems use feedback amplifiers. In general we can talk about two main types of feedback amplifiers. We have negative feedback, And so with negative feedback, basically what we're doing is we're taking a portion of that output signal and we're subtracting it from the input. So let's just say portion of output subtracted from the input. And so this is what we're going to be focusing on in this unit here. Our second type is, of course, just going to be positive feedback. And so as you can guess, in this case, we are now adding our output signal to our input. So we can say a portion of output is added to the input. And so we've actually already seen this a little bit when we were looking at our Schmidt triggers. And we're going to see it a little more in a later section when we look at oscillators. So these are sort of special cases uh, when we actually want positive feedback. In general, what we're going to see is positive feedback has a tendency to lead to unstable systems. So for most amplifier configurations, we're going to be using negative feedback. Okay, so a good question might be, why do we even want to use feedback in the first place? So let's talk about some advantages and some disadvantages related to feedback. And so in doing so, we're going to see that our advantages outweigh our disadvantages in most cases. So the first thing is our gain sensitivity. So as we said at the very start of this video, we're, we want to be a lot less sensitive to changes in individual um, parameters uh, for individual transistors. So we have reduced variations in our circuit for variations in individual transistors. So reduced variation, and in this case we're particularly talking about gain. So reduced variations in gain as a result 
of changing transistor parameters. Okay, so that's one of our main advantages. And so we're gonna see several examples later on of just how significant this advantage is. Our second advantage is we have bandwidth extension. And we're gonna mention here in the disadvantage, this comes at a cost, but for many applications, it's, it's well worth it. So our bandwidth extension is, of course, we're just increasing bandwidth compared to the same circuit without feedback. So I'm just gonna do BW for bandwidth compared to our same circuit without feedback. Okay, and so those are the main two we're gonna focus on. Uh, I'm gonna list a few other ones even though we're not going to be dealing with them directly. So having feedback can also improve our noise sensitivity, but only if our noise is coming in our feedback network. So we potentially can increase something called our signal to noise ratio. So I'll write it out this first time and you might have seen this in some other classes. Um, typically, we'll just abbreviate this as SNR, signal to noise ratio. But this is only true if our noise is generated in the feedback system. So if noise is in our feedback loop. And what we'll see is, is that if the noise is part of the input, then we don't really have any way to separate that just by using feedback. Okay, two more advantages, which we're just gonna mention briefly. Uh, the first one is reduction of nonlinear distortion. And so we're not really gonna deal with this at all, but just so you're aware, there are some additional advantages beyond what we're gonna talk about in these notes. And then our fifth one is we have control of impedance levels. And so controlling the impedance levels is going to be very important as we consider loading effects. So we're gonna look at a lot of different uh, configurations for these feedback networks. And as you recall from some other classes, loading is very important as we are cascading several things together or even as we have a particular load that is varying or maybe a particular input that needs a high impedance uh, for the amplifier. So being able to control that is very important to um, minimize loading effects. So we'll just write here that this is related to our loading effects. Okay, so we see we have five advantages to our feedback network. Like I said, we're gonna look at a couple of these pretty heavily, the first two, the other ones we just wanna at least mention here. And then we do have some disadvantages. So as with anything, when we're designing, there's always trade-offs, it's not just all good. So a couple disadvantages of our feedback. So the first one is our circuit gain. So the first advantage is we said we have a better gain sensitivity, but that's going to come at the cost of a reduced gain. So reduced gain compared to the same circuit with no feedback. So without feedback. And so that also relates to our bandwidth extension. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little more in more detail later. Our gain bandwidth product is going to be essentially constant. So if we're increasing bandwidth, then we have to be decreasing our gain. The second one is stability. So this is sort of conditional. Um, in most cases, our feedback is going to improve stability, but just by sort of the nature of feedback, we do have this possibility of becoming unstable and oscillating. And so of course, oscillation is something we're going to look at in a later, uh, a later section where we actually design these amplifiers to oscillate intentionally. So that's sort of a general overview of what we're talking about with feedback. What we're gonna see in later videos is some basic feedback topologies, and then we're going to relate that to some actual circuits.